the bread kitchen. Danish pastries come in all sorts of shapes with all sorts of fillings, but they all use the same basic dough. Regular viewers of the bread kitchen will recognise this dough, so let's get on and make some Danish. To make my Danish pastries, I've got 400 grams of good quality bread flour, 250 grams of lukewarm milk, 250 grams of butter, this is unsalted, a good quality French butter, four tablespoons of caster sugar, an egg, two teaspoons of dried yeast, and a teaspoon of salt. Add the yeast to the milk, give it a good stir, and leave for 10 minutes for the yeast to get going. Put the flour, sugar, and salt in a large bowl and mix well. Make a well in the center. Add in the milk yeast mix and the egg. Then mix to a nice smooth dough. And what you'll end up with is a somewhat sticky dough. Turn the dough out onto a well floured surface and knead it well for three or four minutes. If it helps, sprinkle on a little more flour, but don't go crazy. Now I've added about an extra two tablespoons of flour into this dough. And you can see it's come together really well. It is a little bit tacky, so I'm not leaving it on the surface too long, otherwise it'll stick a bit like silly putty really but it's nicely come together so I'll just make it into a ball you can see how it's kind of sticking to my fingers but not sticking to my fingers if you see what I mean I'll pop the dough into this lightly greased bowl then I'll cover it and leave it in a nice warm place until it's about doubled in size now, my butter's at room temperature, which in my kitchen means 20 degrees centigrade, and I need to roll it out into a sheet. And to help with that, I've taken a piece of greaseproof paper and drawn on it a rectangle 5 inches or 12 centimetres by 30 centimetres or 12 inches. And I'm going to turn it over. You can still see the pencil marks through the paper. And I'll pop it on the surface. Now put the butter in the center of the rectangle, cover it with a piece of cling film, then carefully roll it out. Take your time, there's no hurry. And try and get it as even as you can. And when you think you've got a pretty much level piece of butter, just peel off the cling film, use the lines as your guide and trim off anything that falls outside the line. Lift it up and put it somewhere where you think might be a bit thin. Then recover and carry on rolling. Then when you're happy you've got a fairly uniform piece of butter at the right size, pop it in the fridge for at least half an hour to chill. The dough has risen well so I'll just flour the surface. I'll turn the dough out, knock it back, and bring it together. So here's my dough. Now I'm going to roll it out into a rectangle 45 centimetres or 18 inches long by 15 centimetres or 6 inches wide. Put some flour on my rolling pin and roll gently. If you want to, you can just square up the edges by cutting with a sharp knife. Now take your butter, which should be solid, peel off the plastic and position the butter down one end of the dough, leaving about half an inch all the way around. Peel off the paper. Looking good. Now take this top third and fold it down over the butter. Stretch it a little bit if you need so that you've effectively got a halfway point here. And then fold up the bottom piece over the top piece and press it together. I'm just going to make sure my surface is well floured again. 
Now this is the way that we folded it, this way, so I'm going to give it a quarter turn and I'm going to roll it out once again to 45 centimetres or 18 inches by 15 centimetres or 6 inches. And what we're doing here is we're creating layers of butter and dough. Now as we did before, fold the top third into the middle, the bottom third into the middle, now we'll pop the dough into a plastic bag and pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes to get everything nice and chilled again. Now the dough is nice and chill and it's wrapped this way. Now we're going to roll it that way. So just put a bit more flour on my rolling pin and off we go again. And it'll be the same dimensions, 45 by 15 or 18 inches by 6. Okay, so fold the top third into the middle, fold the bottom third up and over, pop it back in the plastic bag and back in the fridge for another 30 minutes. So I'm going to roll and fold the dough one more time. Again, at the moment it's folded this way, so I'm going to roll it that way. Do, 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 do. Right, I'm going to pop this now in the fridge for at least an hour and you can even leave it overnight in the fridge. Now I quite fancy making some sweet Danish today and I think I'm going to put some creme patissiere in them. Now for the creme patissiere I've got 125 ml of milk, 125 ml of double cream or heavy whipping cream, 3 egg yolks, 50 grams of castor or superfine sugar, 15 grams of plain flour and a vanilla pot. Or you could use half a teaspoon of vanilla flavouring. Start by carefully splitting the vanilla pot down its length. Put the milk and cream in a small saucepan, toss in the vanilla pot, then bring it gently to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, turn off the heat and leave it to stand for 10 minutes. In a large bowl, beat together the egg yolks and the sugar. Beat together well for a few minutes. After a few minutes, the mixture should have paled up a bit. Now I'll beat in the flour. Now take the vanilla pod out of your milk and cream mix and use a knife to scrape all the seeds out. Put them in the milk mix. I've split it open, Just scrape all these lovely flavourful seeds out of the pod. Now give it a good whisk to disperse all the seeds. Then add the milk and cream a little bit at a time into the egg yolk sugar mix. If your milk's too hot or you add too much, you're going to make scrambled egg in here. Not desirable. It's all nicely mixed and fluid. Pour it back in the saucepan, then pop it back on the stove and heat gently with whisking until it thickens. I've got to the point now where it's really quite thick. I'm going to turn off the heat, pour the mixture into a bowl, use a rubber spatula to get it all out. Just give it one last mix, you can see it's almost gelatinous. And then I'm going to put some plastic film on the top, actually touching this mixture. And the idea of this is that it stops a skin forming on your newly and lovely created creme patissiere. Now leave this for a few hours to cool completely. So here's my dough which has been resting in the fridge overnight. I'm now going to roll it out on this floured surface to about five or six millimetres thick. It takes a little bit of time to get there so don't be in any hurry. So I'll roll my dough out into a rectangle which is a little more than 40 centimetres by 32 centimetres and I'm now going to trim it to that exact size. And having done that, I'll now trim it into 8 centimetre squares. Mind your fingers. So 
So now I've got 20 pieces of dough. Now I'm going to shape these in two different shapes. So the first is the pinwheel and I'm going to make four cuts to almost the centre. Not quite. And then pick a corner, bring it into the middle and press. Pick a corner, bring it into the middle and press. Corner, oops wrong one, corner into the middle and press and then corner into the middle and press. There we are. Nice little pinwheel shape. Now the next one is a simple pocket and all I have to do is fold each of the corners into the middle. And press. Press firmly. Perfect. I have one 10 pinwheels, 10 pockets. Now I'm going to freeze half of these and I'll show you how I do that. Put the ones you want to freeze on some baking paper on a tray. Pop the tray in a plastic bag, then put it in the freezer. When they're frozen, quickly pop them into a sealed bag. And then when you want to have fresh Danish, you simply pull them out of the freezer the night before, put them on a tray, cover it, and overnight they will defrost, and then you can bake them in the morning. Back in the freezer. Now for those you want to bake, put them on some baking paper on a baking tray, but make sure they're well spaced. Pop the tray in a nice big bag, then leave in a warm place for about 45 minutes to an hour to let these puff up. These have been rising for about an hour and then they're ready for baking. But first I'll decorate them. I've put some creme patissier air into my piping syringe and I'll just put a goodly blob in the middle of each pastry and then pop on, in my case, an apricot half. This is a tinned apricot half. These are now ready to go in the oven at 160 fan oven, 180 normal oven for around about 15 minutes. Now when these come out they look a little bit like fried egg on muffin. It has to be said though the pinwheels do look rather cute. ...for how you might make other shapes and other fillings, including some savoury ones. I hope you enjoy making your Danish and do join me next time in the Bread Kitchen.